Hey guys, just before this tutorial starts, I just do want to say uh, sorry for the delay in tutorials recently, you know, I just like to try and make sure that they're as best as possible, and plus I do have other stuff I'm doing as well, such as Bodhi and Friends and a few other games I'm working on, so yeah. So yeah, thanks for understanding guys, um, you know, whenever there are delays with the tutorials, just do know that it's because I'm trying to make sure I'm not rushing them out, and there might be like a certain problem that I might have noticed or whatever, and you know, if I rush out the tutorial then it might not be as good, there might be some issues and you guys might end up having some dramas. So uh, yeah, I like to try and make sure that they're as good as possible since there have been a few times in the past where my tutorials just haven't been really the best. Not that they, you know, didn't work, but just that they weren't the best and I could have probably done a bit better. So yeah, hopefully you all do enjoy this. I know that's going to be a bit of a long one, but do stay tuned since you're going to need to. And yeah. Hey what's up guys, welcome back to a brand new Unity tutorial here on the channel. So in today's Unity tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys a revamped Slender AI that I have made. Now the script for this new Slender AI, fun fact, is actually based off of the script that I made for my game Beware the Night Guard, because the Night Guard in that game functions very similarly to Slender Man, not exactly like him, but very similarly. And the way I made that, you know, night guard in that game, right, I just thought to myself, oh man, i got to revamp the Slender AI because um, that wasn't really the best. Because if you guys have seen my uh, Slender AI tutorials, um, I've made two. I made one showing you guys how to make, like, the full AI, and then I made an updated tutorial fixing the detection of Slender. Because basically what would happen, right, is um, even if you were, like, behind a wall or something, if you were looking in Slender's direction, you could still lose health. But I made an updated tutorial where I fixed that issue, and yeah. Now, that Slender AI wasn't too bad. In fact, a lot of you guys did thank me for it. A lot of you guys did appreciate it and like it. However, I just don't think it's the best, and I thought it could be better, so that's why I've made this updated tutorial today. So yeah, this is going to be a fully revamped Slender AI, and it works a lot better in my opinion, and just, it is a lot better, the scripting's better, etc. So if you guys do find this tutorial helpful and better than the last one, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And yeah, how about we get right into this. So first up what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you guys how the old Slender AI worked so you can, you can get some context of, you know, what I've changed for this new Slender AI. So here I am in this uh, folder here which has the free original scripts that I used for the old Slender AI because the old Slender AI used free scripts, the new one I've made here only uses two. So what's different? Well what we have here is this script here called Slender AI. Now what this is, is it's basically just a script which uh, it randomizes Slender's teleporting. So we have the teleport rate here which determines how often uh, Slender teleports. And at the start of the scene, a coroutine called teleport will start, and whilst teleporting equals to true, after the uh, amount of seconds uh, determined by the teleport rate, uh, randum will equal to a random range of numbers from 0 to 8. And so basically it picks between 0 to 7, because the last uh, number in a random range of numbers never gets picked, fun fact, in case you guys didn't know. And so um, if random equals to, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, um, it will teleport to the uh, uh, determined destination based on what random equals to. So yeah. Now, Slender's teleporting in the new script has completely changed. So instead of Slender teleporting, uh, you know, every number of seconds, just randomly teleporting every number of seconds, instead how it works now is he'll randomly teleport when the player looks away from him. It works a lot better that way because then he's not just teleporting, like, literally as the player is looking at him, you know, that's just kind of silly. So I've just remade it, so then what happens is when the player looks away from Slender, right, there's a chance of him teleporting. He won't always teleport, it's like a 1 in 2 chance of him teleporting, basically, so yeah. 
And not only is it when the player looks away from Slender, it's also when the player gets behind a wall whilst looking at him as well. He has a random chance of teleporting now, so yeah, the script is a lot better now, and um, this script here won't be needed anymore. And then we've also got the look at Slender script, so basically with the teleporting and the uh, Slender detection, right, they used to be in two separate scripts, but now with this new re revamped Slender AI, they're all in one, so yeah. Now, this Raycast Slender script, this is the only script from the original tutorial that I will be using in this one, since it is actually useful and I will need it for this, so yeah. And, um, by the way, yes, for anyone who is wondering, I have already got the script made up. I know that in a lot of my tutorials, what I do is I, you know, make the script as I'm recording the tutorial. However, I've decided to do something different here where I've already got it made up just because I felt like the tutorial would have been really long and, well, it would have been because it actually took me about a, a day or so to perfect this because I thought it was going to be a lot easier, you know, just, oh, just a bit of edits to the Night Guard script, but no, I actually did have to, um, you know, add more variables and stuff like that and yeah, I mean, overall it does work pretty well and I am glad that I did revamp it because this does work a lot better. Also, some a big uh, another big change that I want to say as well is um. So here with the Slender AI uh, script, right as you can see, I've got a uh, separate transform destinations for each of uh, Slender's destinations that he can teleport to. Right, it's all just uh, individual variables. But what I've done now is I've actually used a list. I've used a list instead, and this list contains all the teleport positions of Slender, and you can even add more just by doing this. You don't have to actually add more in the code. You can actually just add more by, um, you know, pressing this uh, plus, or if you want to get rid of them, just press minus, and yeah. So it's pretty good like that. Alrighty, so before I do get into, you know, showing you guys how the script and everything works, I do actually want to uh, just show you guys, um, like, an example of, like, like a preview, I guess you could say, of how the Slender AI actually functions. So we're actually going to, like, play and test it out. Alrighty guys, so what I'm going to do now is, before I do show you guys how to actually make the Slender AI, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it out and show you guys how it works, so yeah, let's do that. And the first thing I want to talk about is Slender's teleporting, so as you can see, when looking at Slender, our health goes down, but then when I look away from him, there's a chance of him teleporting. Now, he won't always teleport, but there is a chance of him teleporting. So as you guys can see, the last two times I've looked at him, he has teleported. But uh, yeah, there may be a chance of him not teleporting. Whoop. And yeah, so I do really love how I have done the teleporting in this. It's definitely a lot better than in the, you know, the last tutorial that I made on how to do this. Because even when you were looking at Slender, right, in the middle of looking at him... He could teleport because it was based on a you know a number of seconds but now it's just based on whenever the player looks away from slender or whenever they get behind a wall or something so yeah it's definitely a lot better because then the player doesn't actually see slender teleport well they can still see slender teleport depending on uh, where you have your teleport destinations of course well let's say for example uh slender teleports right and then uh, he might teleport like literally right in front of your eyes. You know, that's most likely because he's chosen a destination which is right in front of you or something like that as you look away. So yeah, that is how Slender's teleporting works. We'll just, uh, you know, play around with it a bit more so then you guys can just, you know, see how it works a bit more. There he is again. Look away, he's still there. And now he's teleported. So yeah. And there he is again. And then we get behind the wall. Oh. 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 And there. So yeah, that's how uh, oh, Slender's teleporting works. The next thing I'd like to talk about is Slender's movement. Now you might be thinking, wait, what do you mean by Slender's movement? Slender can't actually move, right? Well, um, with this script, now I'm not sure if this is how the original Slender works, because, you know, this this isn't, you know, this script, it's not exactly how the original Slender works, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't have access to that sort of script, so yeah. But uh, basically what happens, right, is whenever the player isn't looking at Slender, 
what he'll do is he'll move closer to the player. Now the player will never see Slender move, he'll only move when the player isn't looking. But um, the reason as to why I added this in was to stop exploitation. So then let's say for example right the player's just looking towards the ground and they think to themselves oh wow Slender's never going to get me because I'm just constantly looking towards the ground. Well guess what buddy that's not the case because um, you know if you're not highly alert all the time and you're not always looking out for Slender he will end up catching you eventually if you don't look at him for I mean if you don't look at him for long enough. So let's say for example, right, I just look over towards here and I think to myself, oh wow, you know, Slender's never going to get me because I'm looking over here. How nice is this, you know, Slender's never going to catch me. Meanwhile, in the bottom left hand corner, as you guys can see there, you can actually see uh, that is Slender's distance from the player. So I've basically just got a debug log which tells you that. And then boom, when he gets close enough, he'll end up catching the player and killing him. So yeah. And uh, another thing I'll show you guys too is what happens if you look at Slender for too long. So yeah, the same thing that will happen as just before. The player will die, and boom. Another thing I'd like to talk about is the health bar. Yes, I know that most Slender games don't have health bars. The reason as to why I have one here is just to visualize the health for bugs or anything like that. So if I find any bugs to do with the health, then I can fix them up. See, you guys don't need to have a health bar, I just have it here for, uh, you know, visualization purposes for bugs and stuff, like debugging, I guess you could say, so yeah. Oh, there he is. Oh. So yeah, as you guys can see, is, um, when he doesn't teleport right, he'll sometimes, yeah, get a bit closer. And yeah, and you can tell when Slender's getting closer as well because of the uh, the debug log down there in the bottom left, basically telling you his distance from you. So yeah, if you don't look at him for long enough, then yeah, he will get close enough to you and catch you. Oh, he just teleported right behind me just then and caught me right away. Oh yeah, one last thing I'd like to talk about is um, if you guys do ever end up finding any bugs with this script or anything like that, um, be sure to let me know down in the comments below so then I can actually fix up the script and you guys can find a fixed up version of the script in the pinned comment of the video's comment section. Because yeah, hopefully I won't have to make another updated tutorial on this. If you guys do ever notice any bugs, uh, don't be afraid to tell me since, you know, I will look out for what might be causing the issue and then I can fix it up in the pinned comment below of this uh, video's comment section, so yeah. Alrighty, so now that we're done testing out the AI, now I'm going to show you guys how to actually make it. Alrighty, so first up what we're going to do is we're going to open up the Slender AI revamped script. So here it is. Now I know that this script looks pretty large. I think one reason for this as well would be because of all these, uh, these comments I've actually got here. As you guys can see, I've got a bunch of comments here to help you guys uh, understand what each variable is used for. Now, I haven't actually finished typing these comments out yet, so by the time I actually do post this tutorial, guys, uh, this script will have all its comments typed out, so then you can actually see uh, what does what. So, for example, you know, I might have something here like, um, uh, when player looks at slender, um, blah, 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 you know, just something like that, basically, so yeah. Basically just stuff to help you uh, understand what this all means, because I know that some of you are probably near beginners, and you're probably looking at all this and thinking, wow, uh, okay, what does this all do? Because you're probably overwhelmed. And yeah, I want to make it a lot easier for you guys, and I know that I don't usually do comments in my scripts, but I want to start doing that from now on to uh, help you guys out a bit more, and yeah. Alrighty, so first up we're going to be talking about the variables of this script. So first up we have Slender's NavMesh agent component. Now what this is, is it's basically like a nav, it's his NavMesh agent component, it's how he moves around. And then we have Slender's Mesh Renderer component. Now this will be used for uh, Slender's detection. And then we have Slender's movement speed. 
And then we have Slender's aggro time, and as you guys can see here with this comment I have here, it says time it takes for Slender to kill, to kill the player whilst looking at him. And then here we have the static increase rate and the static decrease rate. Now what this is, is as you can see here, rates at which static images opacity increases decreases so this is talking about uh when you're looking at slender you know how the screen will start to go static right well yeah uh what these variables are here for is to determine like how fast it will uh you know go static and then how fast it will decrease in static when you're not looking at slender and then we have the sound increase rate and the sound decrease rate so uh, these are the rates at which the static sounds volume increases and decreases. So uh, as the screen is going more static, right, there'll also be a static sound that plays as well. And basically, yeah, just as these uh, variables determine how quickly the screen will go static and uh, how quickly the uh, screen will no longer be static when no longer looking at Slender, uh, these sound, the, the sound increase rate and the sound decrease rate, they do the same thing but with the static sound. And then of course we have the health increase rate and the health decrease rate, these pretty much do the same thing, there's not really much uh, ex explanation there. And then we have the catch distance, so this is the distance from which Slender catches the player if they get too close. And then we have the player's health which will equal to 100 at the start. And then the player's health slider, um, you don't have to have this, in fact I am going to add a bull, which uh, you know, if you don't want to have a health slider I will add a bull, so then uh, you actually have to tick it if you want to use a health slider or not, so yeah. And then we have the player's transform, and then we have Slender's main transform, so like the transform of his parent object or just your main Slender AI. And then we have Slender's jump scare camera, so the camera that appears when the player gets jump scared by Slender and they die. And then we have the black screen that appears uh, shortly after the player dies and then they teleport back to the uh, same scene or a death scene or whatever you want. And then we have Slender's destination. And then we have random and ran2. Now what these are used for is, uh, as you can see here, these are integers that are used to randomize what position Slender will teleport to next. Well, that's what the random one is for. Random2, this is actually used for uh, something else. I haven't updated this comment, so yeah. But um, random2, this is used for something else. Random, this is actually used for uh, Slender's teleporting, so determining uh, what uh, destination you'll teleport to next, so yeah. And then we have an int, an integer which will be used to determine the chance of uh, Slender's teleporting. So as you guys can see here, integer used to randomize the chance of teleporting after the player looks away from Slender. So that's what the teleport chance is. And then we have these uh, tokens here. Now as you guys can see here, these are integers used to make sure things don't occur, don't occur, sorry, don't occur more than once in the update void. So yeah, um, in case you guys don't know, like let's say for example, uh, you know, the update void in a Unity C Sharp script, right? That updates every single frame. So if you have something that happens in an update void, like let's say for example, you want to set an object active, right? That will be getting set active every single frame. So if you don't want that to happen every single frame, right? What you do is you'll have like a, well, what I do at least is I have like a token and what will happen is if that token equals to zero, then that event will happen. And then straight after that event happening, the token will equal to one. So then the event doesn't happen anymore. And then, yeah. And then we have a, a ball, which is used to determine if Slender is moving or not. And then we have a bull used to determine if the player is looking at Slender or not. And this bull here will determine if the player gets uh, killed from behind by Slender. Now, I don't think I'm actually using this bull anymore. In fact, let me just look a bit down in the script. I'll, I'll actually just uh, search it. Um, yeah, no, I don't think I actually need this bull anymore, so I can get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. But yeah, this, this script has gone through some editing, so there will be a few variables like that which might not be edited, which might not be needed anymore. I mean, I think that's the only one. I think all the other variables here are all useful and needed, so yeah. And then we have the scene name of the scene that the player will be loaded into after they die, so this could just be the same scene which they were in before, or a death scene, or a menu scene, or whatever. And then we have... Uh, a float which shows Slender's distance from the player, so this is, yeah, Slender's distance from the player. And then here we have a float which is used for the static image's opacity amount. 
So this is what the static image's opacity amount will equal to, is the static amount. And then we'll have the static volume, which will, which the uh, game's audio volume will equal to. I mean, not the game's audio volume, sorry, the static sound's audio volume will equal to. And then uh, next up here we have a list, which is for the uh, teleport destination. So this is a list for transform specifically. And then we have Slender's Raycast script. So yeah, this is that script I was showing you guys earlier with uh, Slender's Raycast. Well, I didn't show you guys, but I talked about it a bit. And then here we have a thing for the static screen. So this is for the uh, static image, the static images, but this is for the static image that appears whenever the player looks at Slender. And then we have a color for the uh, a color variable for the static opacity. So the opacity of the static image. So then we have an audio source variable for the static sound. So yeah, this is just the static sound that plays whenever the player is looking at Slender. And then we have the jump scare sound. Now this will play sometimes whenever the player looks at Slender. You may have noticed it before when we're testing out the AI that sometimes when looking at Slender, a uh, jump scare sound will play. So yeah, and the reason as to why I did that is because I noticed in Slender in the eight pages, I'm pretty sure that happens sometimes when you look at him, like a jump scare sound will play. And yeah, that's why I did that. Alrighty, so here we have the start void. So at the start of the scene, what will happen is the uh, audio listener, uh, it will no longer be paused. And the reason for that is because of a, a, a certain thing, which I'll show you guys now. I was planning on showing this a bit later on because, you know, I want to go through um, line by line. I don't want to have to skip lines, but, you know, to show context of why um, the audio listener won't, won't be paused when the uh, uh, scene starts is because when the player dies right, what happens is the sound will get cut off and the uh, audio listener will be paused. I'm just trying to find... Yeah, here it is. All right, so for this cool player co-routine here, what I've got is uh, after about 3.5 seconds, the black screen will turn on and then the audio listener will pause so then there's no more sound playing. And then after about 6 seconds, the cursor will uh, turn on. And the reason for this is in case if the player loads up into a menu scene or something like that, and they need to use their cursor to, you know, press buttons and whatever, then this will help out with that. Because otherwise, um, then the cursor will just not appear, unless you already have a line of code for that in your own game, which in that case, uh, you'll be fine. But yeah, this is just to help with people who might not have that. And then here we have, uh, you know, your scene loading in, the scene you want to load. And then that's where this comes in here. So with this audio listener.pause equals false line, right? This used to be here. But um, what I noticed is that whenever the scene would load back in, right, the audio wouldn't unpause for some reason. It would still be paused. So yeah, that's why um, I've had to put this line into the start void because, well, yeah, the audio wasn't unpausing even when having this line here, so yeah. And then here we have the on became visible void, so what happens is the AI will uh, no longer be enabled. Now what this means is, um, so when Slender's moving towards the player, right, if they're in the player's vision, what will happen is they will no longer be able to move, and so their AI will be disabled. And then the stop slender uh, void will happen. So here I've got a void here. This doesn't need to be a public void, but um, I've got it as a public void anyway, just in case. But um, basically what will happen is on became visible, uh, moving will equal to false, and looking will equal to true. So slender will no longer move, and uh, you know the player will be looking at slender. So looking will equal to true and then we have the on became invisible void now when the player is no longer looking at slender his ai will turn back on moving will equal to true looking will equal to false then the reset slender void will happen and then token 2 will equal to zero and now what this is for token 2 is it's for something down here um he, look you guys will see later on let's just uh Let's make sure we don't get sidetracked or anything. But yeah, so then here we have the reset slender void. So what happens here is the teleport chance int will equal to a random range of numbers between 0 and 2. So basically 0 and 1. And then uh, if the teleport chance equals to 0, what will happen is then the random will equal to a random range of numbers between 0. And then the number of uh, destinations we have in our teleport destinations list. 
and then a uh, token will equal to zero token two will equal to zero again and then slender's main transform so just slender's transform uh, position will equal to a random one of the random destinations based on what random equals to so yeah so yeah slender um will be teleported to a random destination based on what random equals to from the list of teleport destinations that's the best way to explain it there so then here we have our update void now our health sliders value will equal to player health and then the static sound volume will equal to a static volume the static volume float and then the static opacity so um you know and then the static opacity will equal to static amount and then the static screen's color will equal to static opacity since static opacity is the color and at all times as well slender will continuously be looking at the player so they'll be looking at the player's position at all times and the ai distance equals to the distance between uh slender's position and the player's position and then we have a debug log here which then prints out the AI's distance. So if moving equals to true and looking equals to false and the player health is over zero, or if the raycast script um, just isn't detecting the player, or if the player's health is over zero as well, I mean, and if the player's health is uh, over zero as well with this, the AI's speed will equal to the movement speed, and if token free equals to zero, the uh, reset slender void will happen. So uh, that's this void that we're talking about right here where he disappears. So what this is actually used for, uh, to be specific, is when slender actually goes behind walls. So um, whenever you look away from slender, right, like whenever you look away from his general direction, that's where the on became invisible void comes into play. But then with this, uh, but then with this here, Whenever Slender, I mean, whenever the player goes behind a wall, right? Because the ray, because the raycast script dot detected will equal to false. Uh, if token free equals to zero, that's when, uh, yeah, the reset Slender void will happen, and then token two will equal to zero, and token three will equal to one to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And then uh, the destination will always equal to the player's position, so that will mean that uh, Slender will keep moving towards the player. Token 4 will equal to 0, this is just used to um, make sure that something doesn't happen more than once. The AI's destination will equal to dest, so um, yeah that's what this is here, so dest will equal to the player's position, and then the AI's destination will equal to dest, so yeah that's basically the player's position. And then here we have static amount equals static amount minus static decrease rate times time dot delta time. Now what this does is so when the player isn't looking at slender right, the static amount will decrease and what time what um time dot delta time does so what that does is it makes sure that uh no matter what your frame rate is uh it will still decrease the same because um if you don't have the time dot delta time right um if you don't have this line here then what will happen is if you have a faster frame rate your static amount will decrease faster but if you have a slower frame rate then your static amount will decrease slower so this actually fixes that up and makes it all the same no matter what and then here we have the static volume equals static volume minus sta sound decrease rate times time dot delta time. So yeah, basically, um, you know, the static volume is just getting lower as the player isn't looking at slender. And then also as the player isn't looking at slender as well, the player health will go up. And then if the static volume is below zero, it will equal to zero. This is just to stop the static volume from being able to go below zero. And then same thing with the static amount here as well. So if looking equals to true and moving equals to false and then the raycast script dot detected equals to true and the player health is over zero, then the AI speed will equal to zero, token three will equal to zero, and then if token four equals to zero, random two will equal to a random range of numbers between zero and two, so technically zero and one. And if random two equals to zero, the jump scare sound will play and then token four will equal to one to make sure it doesn't play again. And then uh, what you have here is you just have a uh, slender's transform equals to slender's transform position. So yeah, basically it's just slender's transform position equaling to his own position. And then static volume will equal to static volume plus sound increase rate times time dot delta time. So yeah, the static volume is increasing. And then same thing here with the uh, you know the static amount that's increasing too. And then you have the player health which is decreasing. 
And then if static volume is over 1, static volume will equal to 1. If static amount is uh, over 0 0.9, the reason why I have 0 0.9 instead of 1 is because I don't want the player's, you know, vision to go completely blind when, uh, you know, looking at Slender. Instead, it will just, uh, you know, the max amount will be able to go up to a 0 0.9, so then it's almost blinded, but not fully. And then if the player's health is over 100, it will equal to 100. And now here we have uh, this line here, so if slendermesh.visible is equal to true, now the reason as to why I have this here is so then if the player, I mean if the player, if slender teleports right and he's right in front of the player, there may be a bit of a bug where he doesn't get detected again because he's, you know, just teleported right and he's teleported right in front of the player again, so then the on became visible void can't do anything about making it so then, you know, the player is looking at Slender, so then that's why I have this. Because, um, wait, I'll find the line again. So that's why I have this, this here. Because the on became visible void, right, what this does is it only plays, it only occurs when Slender first appears in, um, you know, the player's vision. So if I look away from Slender and then I look back at him again, that's when the on became visible void will play, because it only plays when he's on become, when he's become visible, just when he's become visible, not when he, not as he's visible, you know? It's not like an update void, it's more like an on trigger enter type thing, you know what I mean? Where it only plays once. So yeah, that's why I've, um, got this down here. So then if, Slender does teleport again in front of the player, then we can have if Slender Mesh dot is visible equal to true, and if you know Slender's ray cast is touching the player, then token if token two equals to zero, then stop Slender. The stop Slender void will happen. So that's just this up here. So moving will equal to false, looking will equal to true, and then token two will equal to one to make sure that doesn't happen again. So yeah, that's what token two is used for. It's used for uh, this line down here. And so then if the player's health is lower than or equal to zero, a co-routine co will play to uh, kill the player. And then the static uh, sound and the static screen, they will uh, increase as well. So, they will so the static uh, screen will increase in opacity, and then the static volume will go up in volume when the player's dead. And if the static volume is over to 1, it will equal to 1. And if the static amount is over 0 0.9, it will equal to 0 0.9. The player will be turned false, the jump scare camera will be turned on, the AI speed will equal to 0, and moving and looking will equal to false. And then um, if the AI's distance is uh, less than catch distance, so that's the distance in which, the, uh, pl the, in, in which Slender can catch the player from, if token equals to zero, then player health will equal to zero and token will equal to one. And then because player health equals to zero, that's when this will come into play. So hopefully um, I explained that okay. If you guys did find that confusing, I'm sorry. I'm not really the best at explaining. But, um, you know, I tried to explain things as best as possible. Um, I, I don't know if that was, you know, very uh, layman's terms. It was probably a bit complicated, but, you know. As I said, I will have comments throughout the script before, uh, you know, uploading this tutorial. So then you guys can uh, actually see for yourselves um, and just be reminded of of how everything here works. So yeah, don't worry, I will have, you know, comments like this, which explain how the variables work and stuff like that, what they're used for, etc. So yeah. And then also very important, up here we have these three lines which we've added uh, using unityengine.ai. This allows us to use the uh, nav mesh agent in script, and then we have Unity Engine .scene management. This allows us to change uh, scenes in script, and then using Unity Engine .ui, this allows us to use uh, UI ele elements such as the uh, slider, the health slider in script. So yeah, so that's what that's for, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much the script there. So yeah. Alrighty, so um, the next script I'll be showing you guys now. If you've watched my original Slender AI tutorial series, uh, well, not tutorial series, more just tutorial, um, the updated tutorial to be exact, because that's where I uh, added this script originally was in the updated version of that original uh, Slender tutorial. Right, let's open that up. So this here is the script used for Slender's Raycast. Now, as you can see here, we have a couple variables, and I will actually be adding comments to this script too. There's no comments here at the moment, because, well, this script was made back before I started wanting to add in comments to my tutorial scripts, so yeah. 
So first up we have the player object variable. So you know this is just the variable for the player object. And then we have Slender's transform, and then we have a bool called detected, and then we have an offset. Now this will be used for if like let's say for example, right, um Slender's transform isn't really positioned the best, so then um his ray cast isn't really positioned the best either. It keeps on bouncing into floors and stuff like that, right? This offset will allow you to um, basically sort of change up exactly where the ray cast is on your slender transform, so yeah. Now here we have our update void. Now here we have a direction, so the direction equals to slender transform dot forward. So um, basically what this means is, uh, you know, from wherever slender's transform is looking, that is where the uh, raycast will be shooting from. So it'll just be shooting from in front of slender, basically. It'll be going forward from in front of slender. That's where the raycast will be shooting from. And then here we have a raycast hit variable called hit, which will be used for, you know, detecting the player. So if physics.raycast, and then um, this, this line will be confusing for newbies. I'm not really the best at explaining uh, raycast, but let me try explain it for you guys. So um, if the raycast, um, so, so the raycast, right, it, uh, it gets shot from the slender's transform position, and then it has the offset added to it as well. So then, uh, you know, um, basically if slender's uh, raycast isn't positioned the best, then the offset will fix that up, hopefully. And then we have Slender's Direction, so that's uh, Slender Transform dot forward, and then out hit, and then mathf dot infinity. What mathf dot infinity means is it basically means just an infinite distance. So no matter how far away Slender is from the player, uh, he will be able to detect the player with the raycast. That is, of course, unless the player is behind a wall, in which then the raycast won't hit them, but yeah. And then we have this line here, which basically, like, draws the, uh, the raycast, so then if there are any problems, we can visualize it by pausing the game and then just going and seeing, like, okay, where's this raycast pointing? Is it pointing right where it needs to be? Why is this not working? And so if the raycast hits the collider of the player object, Detected will equal true, but if it, it but else if it hits anything else, detected will equal false. So yeah, that's how the raycast script works. So if it if the raycast hits the player, detected will equal true. If it hits anything else, it equals to false. And so yeah, that's how both of them scripts for the AI work. Now let's get to some in scene stuff just so you just so you guys can know how to set up the slender AI in scene with your scripts and whatnot. So here we have our slender object. Now, first thing you'll notice here, of course, is that I have a mesh renderer. Now, this mesh renderer, um, you know, all objects pretty much have a mesh renderer. Um, well, not all objects. Let's say, for example, you get an empty object that won't have a mesh render. You, you'll actually need to add that yourself. Um, basically, anything with, like, um, you know, visuals on it, you know, like a 3D type of object on it, right, will have a mesh renderer to render that object. And if you disable that mesh renderer, like if I was to disable, say for example, the mesh renderer of um, Slender's shirt here, it would be gone. So yeah, you'll need to add a mesh renderer. Now, uh, on your parent object to Slender, right, you'll most likely not already have a mesh renderer there. If you do, then good on you. That obviously means that your model and Slender are just all in one thing. So yeah, but um, you know, if you've got like a... Let's say, for example, your mesh renderers of your Slender AI are all in the uh, child objects, right, of your Slender. So, you know, I've got a bunch of mesh renderers which render out, you know, certain parts of my Slender AI, for example, right? This, that won't actually be good enough. What you need to do is you need to actually add a mesh renderer to your parent object because this will be used for Slender's detection. So make sure you have a mesh renderer on your parent object of Slender. And if you don't already, add one. So then we have Slender's script, so you'll want to make sure you have this, and then when you have all the components that I, uh, you know, mentioned to here today, you'll want to add them in. So for example, Slender's nav mesh agent, you know, the mesh renderer, which I just mentioned before, you know, you'll want to fit, fill in all the, all of these numbers here. Um, you can even just copy my numbers if you want to get a good experience. And then we have the uh, health slider, you know, player, you know, you guys get it. So yeah, make sure you fill in that script with all your stuff. And then we have the nav mesh agent. So, 
you know, by getting that, you just search up nav mesh agent and then you can add that. Now, there's not really much you'll need to edit with the nav mesh agent. Um, all I did was I changed the angular speed from 120 to 360 so then Slender could turn faster when he's moving around. But yeah. And then we have Slender's Raycast uh, script. So for this, you'll want to fill in the variables, of course. Um, I've got my offset set to just one on the y axis. Then you'll want to have Slender's transform and the player object as well in the uh, script variables. Make sure you fill them out. And so yeah, that's pretty much uh, it for Slender's main, like, you know, stuff on his parent object. Now let's get to some of the other stuff. So next up we have his jump scare camera. So this is a child object of Slender. So you want to make sure that you have a jump scare camera on him and um, there's no script attached to this. There is a, a jump scare sound attached to this though, which I'll play. So yeah, um, that sound will play. That sound's actually from Beware the Night Guard, fun fact. It's one of the sounds that play when you um, pick up objects and stuff. So yeah, now we'll disable that jump scare camera. And then um, I shouldn't have any other components here. Yeah, no, I don't. So yeah, the only components that I have as part of Slender are on the uh, parent object here. So next up, you want to have your static screen. Now what this is, is it's just a UI image, uh, a raw image to be exact. So how you get this is you'll go game object, UI, raw image, and then you'll get your raw image here. And then um, I've also got the, uh, the static sound on this as well. So yeah, my static sound is also on my static screen. And then for the raw image, it's got this uh, render texture on it. And uh, what this is, I'll, I'll have to, th there's a lot of stuff to explain here, but um, so yeah, this um, render texture here is connected to this video player. Now the video player, you know, how you get this is you go game object, video, and then video player. And then you'll want to add your static video into the video clip section. Make sure it loops as well. Make sure it plays on awake and whatnot, right? And something else I also recommend is um, making sure your audio output mode for the video player is set to none. Make sure you do that. And uh, make sure the render mode is set to render texture. And uh, how you actually get a render texture is you go right click in your folder, go create, and then render texture. And then yeah. And then um, with your render texture as well, you can, uh, if you ever notice it being high quality, you can change the size of it. So I've got my size of my render texture set to 1920 by 1080, for example. So yeah. And then once you get your video player set up and your render texture set up, you know, just make sure that you have your render texture here in the target texture of the video player. And then also make sure that on your static screen, you have the render texture here. So then the video will play on your screen. So yeah. And then we have the jump scare sound that plays sometimes, so yeah, this will only play uh, sometimes when looking at Slender. Uh, play on Awake is turned off, of course, because we don't want it to play on Awake, and yeah, there's nothing really much else edited with that. Then we have the player's health slider. Now, when using a health slider, um, you'll want to make sure that the max value is set to 100, because otherwise if it's set to 1, then we'll... The health slider's max value will be 1 and it won't show, um, you know, the other 99 values in there. So yeah, so... And then we have the black screen. So yeah, this is literally just a black image which appears. Um, how you would get an image, of course. And oh, I forgot how to show you how to get a slider as well. If you want to get the same sort of slider that I have, make sure you go... Um, actually, I think it's... Yeah, it's literally just right here. UI slider. And then boom. And then you've also got a bunch of legacy stuff here as well, like text and stuff, but yeah. So um, you'll just want to go UI slider to get yourself a slider. And then to get yourself an image, you just go UI and image. And yeah. Now, when it comes to your player, there's nothing special that you'll need to have on your player by any means necessary. Um, I guess just maybe tag your player as player. You don't really have to. But um, yeah, if you want to, then tag your player as player. Again, it's not really needed for this. But um, yeah, just in case of anything. Now the last thing that I'll be showing is Slender's teleport positions. So here I have all of Slender's teleport positions. Now you can have as many teleport positions as you want. I've got eight in this scene. However, you can include more if you want to, which I might actually do that right now. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just going to be placing a lot more uh, random destinations for Slender to teleport to. 
as you guys can see. So now I've got 13 teleport destinations. And uh, what these are is these are just empty, just empty objects. And then they have a tag on them so then I know what they are and I can see them visually. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Slender. And then I'm just going to plus, plus, plus a couple times. <clears throat> and then uh, let's fill in these variables with these new destinations. So yeah, you can include however many destinations you want. You could even have a hundred destinations if you want to. There's no limit to this. You can just keep on plussing and adding to your list. So yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much it guys. That's pretty much how the Slender AI is made. That's how it works. One thing I actually forgot to show you guys is how to do nav mesh because that's actually important for Slender moving. So what you do is you go window and then you go AI navigation, then that will bring up the navigation window. So as you can see here, um, I've got this blue outline here. And what this is, is this is the nav mesh where Slender can walk. So what you do is you select, say for example, your floor. And then uh, here on the object tab, you've got, uh, well by default, you guys will have navigation static unchecked. You need to check that. And then uh, you select navigation area walkable. And then this will mean that your floor is a walkable object that your AI can walk on. And then for your walls, uh, make sure they're set to navigation static as well and then not walkable. So yeah. And then when you've got all that done, when you've got all your uh, nav mesh set up, so you've got your floors all set to walkable and all your uh, objects you don't want your uh, AI to walk through all set as not walkable, you go to the bake tab and then you press bake and then that will bake your nav mesh. And then there's these other tabs here. For example, you have this tab. Now this isn't needed for this tutorial at all. And uh, this is just like a thing to set your like nav mesh agent settings and stuff like that. Um, if you want to make it so then say for example uh, you don't want your AI to go as close to the walls, you can widen the agent radius and then that will actually make the uh, nav mesh a bit more narrow because the AI is a bit more, you know, wider. So yeah, if you want it to be like that and you don't want the AI to go so close up to the walls, you can always adjust the agent radius and agent height and stuff like that to help with that. If you guys did enjoy this tutorial and you did find it helpful, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And again, as I said earlier too, let me know if you find any little minor bugs with this script as well, so then I can try and fix it up. Um, if I can't fix it up or if I can't bo be bothered to, for whatever reason, because I might be a bit stressed out or whatever, right? You guys can of course try and fix it up yourselves as well. But yeah, you guys are free to make whatever edits to this script you want as well. So if you find that this script uh, works closely to how you would want a Slender AI script to work, but there's a few things you would like to change to make it more suited for yourself, then of course you can. You're free to use this and uh, change it up how you like. So yeah, again guys, thanks for all watching this tutorial. Um, if you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Um, yeah, I don't really use my voice in my tutorials as much, and I will be honest with you guys, uh, Recording this tutorial was kind of stressful uh, just because, you know, I kept on stuttering and stuff like that and I've had to do many takes. So yeah, this isn't just all in one take I've done this recording in. It's taken multiple takes in order for me to do this. So uh, yeah, thanks for understanding and hopefully you guys did all like this. Alright, just before I do end this video, I just do want to show you guys the finished revamped Slender AI script. So I've added all the comments onto it now as you can see. So literally every single line of code has a comment on it basically explaining what each thing is doing. And I have also changed up a few things as well, so if you do notice any small changes with the script, it's probably because I have made a few small changes in case I've noticed like, oh wait, that shouldn't be that way and stuff like that. So yeah, this is the uh, finished revamped Slender AI script. It's got all the comments, so yeah. And then here's the Raycast script as well, which I've added comments to as well, so you guys can understand this a bit better. And uh, yeah, that's that. Oh, also something else that I forgot to mention as well is I added the bull for using a health slider. Um, where is it? I'm just trying to find... Oh, uh, here it is. Yeah, so 
I've added a ball now for using the health slider, so only when you have this ball ticked will the health slider actually be updated. So if you don't want to use a health slider for your slender, then you don't have to. Also, there was this other change that I needed to make at this part in the script at around the 190 line section around here, right, to do with the player health, because as you can see here, right, when uh, Slender's moving and the player's not looking at him, the player's health will go up, right? Well, with this line of code here, now, I made this change yesterday, so I forget exactly, I, I think what I had here was if player health is less than zero then player health equal to zero but what it should have been is uh if player health over 100 then player health equal to 100 so yeah because we don't want the uh player health to uh go above 100 so yeah that was one problem with the script which i quickly just fixed up now before the end of the tutorial so yeah and uh, just before I do end off the tutorial as well, I am going to test out the script once more because like I did say, I did make a few tiny changes to the script to uh, make things work better. I feel like the health goes down uh, quicker now when it's at like the top 100 thing. When it's at like max health it goes down uh, like quicker now which is a good thing because it like goes down straight away. I just checked back on my footage and it turns out that the health slider doesn't go down quicker. And I think the reason as to why is because even though the line of code which basically like sets the player's health to 100 if it's over 100 right that line of code was originally in the other section of when the player is looking at slender and i was thinking to myself oh that shouldn't be there it should be in the section of where the player's health is increasing so it doesn't increase above 100 right but i think even when it's in the other section it does still work because then when the player looks at slender right as soon as they look at slender um even though that line of code is in the section of the script where the player's health is decreasing as soon as the player looks at slender if their health is over 100 it will be set to 100 so then when their health is decreasing it decreases at the exact normal rate so i think even before the script was fine i didn't really need to make that change but eh, it's just a small little thing i noticed anyway because i think before there was a bit of a delay because the health would be going above 100 i think so yeah, I think it works better now. Alright guys, so I've made yet another couple, or I should say another lot of uh, changes to the revamped Slender AI script. And the reason as to why is just because, well, today has been sort of stressful for me because I really wanted to get this tutorial uploaded today as of recording this footage right now. But, uh, yeah, I've just been having some minor issues with Slender's detection, such as when I look straight at the ground, for example, he detects the player. I don't know, it's really weird. So, yeah, I've been just having a bunch of little issues to do with Slender's detection, and I just sort of realized, okay, using the on became visible and on became invisible methods of detection is not the best. So what else can I do to, you know, make things better? And then that's when I actually, uh, you know, did get some help online via ChatGPT, and thanks to ChatGPT, I've actually uh, found a new method of detection which has really, really helped me out. So yeah, credit to Chat to ChatGPT for this, honestly. So let me show you all the script now. So you will notice some changes. Most of the variables are the same, except we don't need token two anymore. That's gone. And uh, you'll notice as well that the on became visible and on became invisible methods are gone and so's the uh, stop slender void since we don't need that anymore. So what have we got here now? Well as you can see in the update void here is our new method of detection. So what we're going to be doing is we'll be getting the players, the player cameras thruster, thrust and plane. Sorry it's sort of a tongue twister there. So we're going to be getting the uh, player cameras thrust and planes aka just the cameras view. So if you want to know what the thrust and planes are, correct me if I'm wrong here, but um, I'm pretty sure the thrust and planes of a camera are like the are like this near plane here so this here is like the thrust and plane of a camera so basically uh you get that in the script so we do have a new uh, variable for the player camera 
And then here we have the code which has to do with Slender's detection. So as you can see here, if Slender is within the player camera's FOV and the player's health is over zero, so that's this line right here then all this happens. So yeah, pretty much all the same stuff that I showed you guys earlier. So if the player is looking at Slender, then all this stuff happens. And then if the player isn't looking at Slender, or if the Raycast uh, isn't hitting the player, if Slender's Raycast isn't hitting the player, then this stuff will happen. So yeah, so it's just a different method of detection. It's a lot better now, and it stops a lot of the minor issues. So pretty much any minor issue to do with Slender's detection is gone now. This is perfect, and this is probably the method of detection that the actual Slender AI script uses as well. I'm convinced of that now, since this is just probably the best method of doing this, and I'm surprised that I haven't found out about this yet. But yeah, the code is a bit... Uh, it's not really something I'll probably be able to remember yet either. But yeah, um, it is cool that I did learn this today though. So yeah, the uh, Slender AI script seems a lot better now in my opinion, and we are going to test it out one last time uh, before the end of this tutorial. Oh, and by the way, we don't need the uh, looking and moving bulls anymore, we can actually remove them. So uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, the script's pretty much done. Everything is pretty much all good now. I think the Slender AI is perfect, is as perfect as it can be in my opinion, for uh, what I'm at trying to achieve at least. So let's test it out one last time. All right. And as you can see, it's uh, working well. Yeah, things are working pretty good now. I'm really happy with uh, how Slender's detection is. I've been playing around with it, and yeah, it's definitely been a lot better than before. Oh. Now there is actually something that I've noticed, and it has to do with um, Slender's transform where it's placed. So if I look a little bit above his feet, right? If I look a little bit above Slender's feet, then what I've noticed is um, he just like disappears. Even if he's still in my view, he'll still disappear. Look, see, he's like still moving towards me. See, look, it says I'm not detecting him anymore, but he's still moving towards me. Now the reason for this guys, and this doesn't have to do with the method of detection I'm using, this actually is my fault, so what you want to do right is if you have this exact same thing happen to you that I just happened, that just happened to me just then, what you want to do is uh, if you've got a prefab, uh, what you want to do first is you want to unpack it, if you don't, if your object, if your slender isn't a prefab then you don't have to worry about that, but um, then what you want to do is you want to uh, select all your child objects from your Slender, move them out. And then with your parent object, right, so the reason as to why uh, Slender's detection was stuffing up for me a bit, for me a bit right there as I was looking above his feet and he was still like uh, coming after me basically, is because his parent transform object is like at his feet. You want to make sure that it's probably around this region right here, like around uh, his torso, your parent object. So then you can avoid them sorts of detection issues, so yeah. Another thing you could do as well to avoid them detection issues is just by having your Slender as just one whole mesh. So then um, the mesh renderer is just like, you know, covering up Slender's one whole 3D mesh. So then it's just based on that and it's not based on, you know, one little specific point like with this empty object here and how it just has a, a mesh render on it, but it's got no 3D object attached to it, so as soon as you look a little bit down beneath it, then yeah, you're still gonna, like, detect the, uh, I mean, you're, you're not gonna be able to detect uh, the detection anymore, basically. So yeah, and then um, once you do position uh, Slender's parent transform right, if you <clears throat> had to change it just like I did, what you want to do afterwards is um, you'll notice that your nav mesh agent is a bit off, you'll want to change the base offset of it back to uh, so then it's back towards the ground, so yeah. And then once you get that done, that's when you can then select all your child objects again, move them underneath Slender, and then boom. 
So now let's actually test that out again and see if that uh, does fix up things, because it should. Alright, so where is Slender? Can't see him right now. Oh, there he is, except it's not detecting. And why is this? Well, this has to do with um his Raycast. In fact, I want to speak a bit about Slender's Raycast in a bit as well. So what you want to do is, um, after changing Slender's uh, uh, transform height and stuff, right, after you've fixed up his parent transform height if you needed to, just like I did, uh, you'll need to change his offset as well, because uh, Slender's transform, Slender's offset, right, it's just continuously pointing forward, so if the player's, like, any higher or lower than Slender's uh, ray cast, then it won't be detected. And that's actually something else that interesting that I want to talk about, so... Uh, if you guys remember in my original tutorial, I had it that Slender's Raycast was looking at the player at all times, and the reason as to why I don't have it like that anymore is because, well, there's this bug in Unity, I think. I think it's just an in-general Unity bug, because there's no way to fix this, right? But when the player moves, the Raycast, it loses track of the player, and it can't actually keep up with the player anymore, so how I have to do it with this Slender is the Raycast just continuously points forward, and Slender's always looking at the player, and he seems to be able to keep up easily that way. Alrighty, so let's just change the offset of this Raycast now. And uh, let's see if this fixes up the detection. And yes, it does. So then we'll look a bit beneath. But, so you probably just noticed there as well that when I was looking a bit beneath uh, Slender's torso, when I was looking a bit beneath his torso, it was doing the thingy again. Where, uh, yeah. So what I'm actually going to do is I am actually going to do a test where um, we're going to actually change the mesh of Slender that we're using for detection. We're just going to use like his, uh, his casual suit mesh. And I'm going to test out to see if that will uh, fix up the thing. Oh wait, it's going to be a skinned mesh renderer. Of course it does. Although I don't want to change it up in the skip in the um that in the script because I know that you guys will probably want to use mesh renderers instead of skinned mesh renderers, but if you do want to use a skinned mesh renderer instead of a mesh renderer, all you do is you just add this out the front of it. And then yeah. And then you can apply a skin mesh renderer, and boom. So now let's actually test out Slender's detection now and see if we uh, just fixed it up. And yeah, it actually works a lot better now. It works a lot better now. Because, um, you know, his mesh renderer... Sorry guys, um, I'm gonna have to... Here, wait. As I talk, I'm not gonna have that on because it's just really loud, so basically, right? Um, now that we've just, uh, made it so then Slender's, uh, mesh renderer is just this suit thing, right? The detection is a lot better because the mesh renderer is actually covering, you know, most of Slender. So when we look away from, like, um, like, let's say for example, we just look away from his torso or something, right? He won't still be, uh, moving towards us, or he won't, uh, you know, go away, I'd, like, teleport as if he's, uh, not being detected anymore. Um, he will actually still be detected now until you fully look away from him, so yeah. So yeah, that's one little thing to keep in mind there with the mesh renderer, so yeah. Let's just test it one last time, and I won't speak this time because, uh, you know, it's gonna be loud. Yeah, that definitely works a lot better, and yeah, so if you guys want to use a skinned mesh renderer like me, um, when I upload the script for this tutorial, when I upload the script for this tutorial, it'll probably just be a mesh renderer component in the script, but um, if you want to do a skinned mesh renderer like me, then yeah, just add that there, skinned at the front of mesh renderer, and then you should be all good to go, but yeah. Alright, so I'm back with yet another change to the script, and this time it has to do with the Raycast script. 
So with Slender's ray cast direction, right, instead of it pointing forwards at all times from Slender's transform, instead now it'll be pointing towards the player's position at all times from Slender's transform. And the reason for this is because, you know, if the player is any higher or lower than Slender's ray cast, like let's say for example, the player is on a hill and Slender's down on the ground, right, so the player's got the higher ground, well, Slender won't be able to detect the player then because the Raycast will just be completely just, you know, pointing forward. It won't be pointing up towards the player at all, so yeah, it won't be able to detect him and then it'll sort of break. So what I've done here now is I've actually made it so then uh, Slender's Raycast is pointing towards the player at all times. And the reason as to why I didn't do this at first is because uh, it was causing issues earlier on for some reason. Like I noticed whenever I was moving, right, the Raycast wasn't keeping up with the player. And yeah, it was just really weird. The Raycast, whenever I was moving, it wasn't keeping up with the player. So then I just had to make it so then the Raycast was pointing forwards at all times from Slender's transform. And then I noticed that the Raycast was keeping up with the player. So yeah. But it seems like uh, when it comes to this, right, um, now for some reason the direction has decided to work. I don't know what has changed here for it to work now. Maybe it has to do with the other script, the uh, other, you know, the other part of the uh, Slender AI, the main Slender AI script. Maybe it has something to do with that, I don't know. But uh, yeah, this uh, line of code works here now. So yeah. So let's say for example, um, I will show you guys an example of course before uh, stopping this recording. So say for example, right, um, your player's ground is lower than slender. So down here for example. Oh. Now slender can actually detect the player from higher vantage points. So if the player is any higher or lower than slender, slender will be able to detect them. Yeah, as you can see too, there is no issues with, uh, you know, the player moving. So yeah, we can actually, um, do that now. So if you guys want to make, you know, whatever type of map you want, you don't have to worry now about Slender's Raycast not pointing at the player, because now it will always be pointing at the player. So, uh, yeah. So um, overall guys, I think this is like the end of the tutorial. If you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. I will admit that this has been pretty stressful and this will probably be the last Slender related tutorial I'll make for a while. I kind of just want to move on from Slender related stuff for now. Um, I'll come back to, you know, doing that Slender tutorial series maybe eventually. But um, I just feel like taking a break for now, who knows, I might even make another Slender, t like the Slender Part 9 uh, tutorial, the Slender Series Part 9 tutorial uh, in a few weeks or so, I don't know, I just feel like taking a break from all this Slender stuff for now. It's been sort of stressful, you know, trying to just make this the best as possible, because, you know, I try to make my tutorials as best as possible, and I just get real anxious when, you know, I feel like they're not going to be any good, because there have been a few tutorials of mine before where they just haven't been the best. And uh, yeah, I, tr I try to make sure that they are the best, you know what I mean? And that's why there's been so much changes with the script throughout this tutorial as well. So I am sorry about that if, you know, you guys feel like you've been a bit like sidetracked or whatever. Like, oh, you know, I thought we are going to be using this method, but then you've changed it to this. And yeah, I know. It can be like that sometimes, I guess. So, so yeah. Anyways, thank you all for being part of this, I guess you could say, journey. And uh, yeah, thanks for all, for all watching. If you enjoyed, if you learned something new. Uh, be sure to let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.